Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. Today we're talking about an event that was kind of a groundbreaking in 2018, the review, the release of a live action um, fully steampunk movie called uh, Mortal Engines. And uh, it was, uh, it was directed by uh, Christian Rivers, and the producer was none other than the great Peter Jackson, and and re released by Universal Pictures. So they were expecting really great things out of this, and it just the just came out this last December, and so this was based on a 2001 novel by Philip Reeve, which is kind of a, a YA type novel released by Scholastic. There was a lot of critical acclaim. Um, it had uh, like a 3.9 stars on Goodreads, and there were three sequels. So the, the book did pretty well, especially in the UK, which is where, you know, the author's British. So it had kind of an interesting premise, didn't it? It, it did, it did. So let's get into the meat of it. Okay. So what they are is the cities are now traveling. They're like big machines. So... Um, it's a future dystopia, yeah. Yes, yes, dystopia. Um... And so the 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 and cities, steam cities yes the cities travel around uh, instead of staying still with the exception of um, the wall which we'll get into um, but for instance so London is this huge massive um, um, machine that's almost like on tire tracks but it's uh, what it does is it goes around eating consuming. Um, other smaller cities. So in the opening of the film, um, and again, I know I know you guys say, and I've heard many comments how I say it's beautiful, but it's beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, the cinematography is, photography is amazing. The CGI is amazing. And so um, at the beginning of the film, there's smaller cities that have set up and their like floors go together and it's like one big marketplace. Um, I thought it was very clever, very original. Yeah, um, I was absolutely in love from the opening sequence um, of um, of this film. This is my only um, pushback um, at all, yeah. and, and we just we pseudo disagree, which I know weird. Um, yeah. um, is that so when the cities eat each other? Yeah, when London consumes the smaller little city. The people who are on the smaller city are brought into London, if you will, and um, they can't take anything with them. It's just basically what they have on them. All belongings are taken away from them. Um, and then the city itself is is munched up and burned for fuel. Okay. Yeah, and they recycle the metal and, and stuff like that. We assume. Yeah. And so... And so it's interesting in yeah. So that you you had a issue with so, this. So yeah, me yeah, I did. And this is this. After a while of consuming all these smaller cities, wouldn't all these people put a strain on their resources? So because that's the whole reason that the cities are eating each other, which they call municipal Darwinism. I love that name. Uh, the whole reason that they're eating each other is because they need more resources. They're running out. The world has been destroyed by some horrible war like a thousand years ago and uh, and that's why it's regressed to this technology which I call retrofuturist steampunk and those geography nuts I have to I have to note that there's now a land bridge between England and the continent which is how London is yes. rolling around yes. in Europe uh, consuming European cities <laughs> so it's 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 an absolutely uh, amazingly clever idea um, so just just that small piece that that yeah. I know you have to suspend disbelief, and I I have a hard time doing that. It's not easy for me to do. So uh, the other thing I really enjoyed is the new verbiage that would come along, the new colloquialisms that would come along with a world mm -hmm. like this. So he I'm not sure the through circumstances which we won't tell you because you have to see yeah, it. Yeah, right. Um, falls off, gets kicked off, so he's not on London anymore. Um, he has to get back on London. And that's what he says, I gotta get back on London. I, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoyed the verbiage mm -hmm. and I enjoyed his character. If he falls off, um, they assume he's dead, which would be yes. pretty dangerous. I mean, you fall off and you don't know what you're gonna hit when you fall off. And uh, he's he's traveling with this, he's traveling with this um, 
girl who has been scarred and she's got this beef with this powerful guy in London uh, called uh, uh, Val Thaddeus Valentine. Thaddeus. Yes. Awesome. And uh, he's like one of the He's like the, the leader of the Guild of Historians, which is very important in this world because one of the things they do is they're, they're going around looking for old technology to try and figure out all this stuff that they've lost, all this modern things. And they had a couple really silly scenes in there that we kind of groaned at that weren't in the yeah, book. Yeah. Because you come, you come in and they're going to the, the, the museum and that's where, that's where Tom works. He's a, he's a historian as well. And, and they have a statue of two of the minions from Despicable Me, and they say, well, these were worshipped as gods in the old, the old okay. day. <laughs> so, this is, so this is what Arliss has to say. Stop it. Okay? Stop it. Uh, minions would have had nothing to do with it, but... I didn't want all too clever sometimes. Yeah. So other than, other, than that, it's, other, other than that, it's pretty faithful to the book. So um, we have Tom and Hester. They're, tra they're walking along trying to get back to London. Hester because get she back on London. On London. <laughs> Hester because she wants to kill Valentine. Yes. And because uh, oh, I guess we shouldn't say. We Definitely probably shouldn't say, it. but she she does have a very she important grudge reason. against him. A very understandable grudge because he's not the good guy. He everybody he's a real hero in London. Everybody thinks he's like like the greatest, but he's not all that no, really. No. So you've got a couple plots yeah. going on. Um, you have some amazing rogue type characters. Yeah. Um, we talked about the wall uh, because uh, Thaddeus, Thaddeus, Radius, wants to um, get through the wall. There's a wall protecting China from the rest of the world, and uh, that's in China. They the cities don't move around. So that's what uh, that's what they want to do is break through this wall so they can plunder China. Uh, because there's a lot of unplundered cities there. So, and to make it even worse, Hester is being pursued by this um, uh, robot uh, cyborg. cyborg. He looks like um, from the Terminator. So yeah. He's kind of got that kind of thing. He's got rogue eyes and kind of dark the blue eyes. Ooh, yeah. really creepy. So he and he talks really kind of creepy. Yeah. Which, which is cool. Like I actually, I actually had the audiobook version of this. And uh, the and uh, the guy named his name is Shrike, and he would say Hester Shaw, and then, <laughs> and the actor is the same, is exactly the same way in the movie. He's Hester Shaw. He wants to he wants to he wants to kill her. He wants her. to kill her. Yes. Um, and the reasons for that will come out. Yeah, and, it's really interesting. It's, it's not as it's not what you very think. clever. So you've yeah. got a couple different things going on. You've got these. Um, these rogues who are going to help Hester and Tom. That's um, and that's one of my other favorite characters is uh, Anna Fang. I love Anna Fang. Anna Fang she's is got the this, coolest glasses this ever. Little, this little Chinese woman. She's an airship pirate, and she, or pilot rather. Bad. I guess ass. they might be pirates too. I'm not sure, but yeah, they're they're very. She's very tough. Oh, she's. And cool. her airship's really cool. It almost looks like a. You know, a junk like the old-fashioned Chinese See, boats. I thought it looked like um, origami. Yeah, yeah, that too. She's real badass, and she's she's a real uh, cool, uh, tough character. She has these these uh, goggles, and uh, and uh, and uh, she looks her she's style, her red and red leather jacket. She's very cool. cool. Yeah. Um, there wasn't one character that I just didn't fall in love with. Um, even the bad guys are cool. Even they're, they're the bad guys are are perfectly bad. Even like, and you guys know what I mean. Even like Valentine, he's he's an interesting bad guy. They're they're perfectly so they're they're not so bad that they're not relatable, and they're not so flawed that you would question that they would be a bad. Yeah. They'd be bad. They're perfectly bad. Um, absolutely amazing. I just I just loved it. I thought. Uh, the direction was amazing. Cinematography, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said well, it again. Peter, it's Peter Jackson, and, 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 and I think this was done in New Zealand. I mean, he loves to do stuff down in New Zealand, you know, like Lord of the Rings was done there, and so on. So you've got all the beautiful mountains and so on in the background. And, uh, and twists and turns. Yes, and, yes. Um, it's, a yeah. kind of a, it's kind of a convoluted plot, which is good because that keeps, keeps us on our toes. Now, there's a number of differences from the novel um, that... Um, well, I kind of preferred the way the novel had it, but uh, Hester was more deformed. She didn't have just a scar. She was really... But, you know, they didn't want to... 
She was that. pretty scarred. Yeah, she was, yeah. And uh, um, Valentine was not the major villain in the book. The major villain in the book was Magnus Chrome, which is, which is a cool name because he has a chrome dome. He's a, he's a bald guy. <laughs> Um, Magnus Chrome, who was the leader of the Guild of Engineers, because the engineers were the real badass guys, that, <laughs> which so I like. That's why he likes yes. it, because the engineers were badass. Yes, yes, they were actually running the city, and but in the book, in the movie, um, Valentine's actually running things, and he's he's pulled the wool over Chrome's eyes, so he doesn't know what Valentine has plotted. Um, Valentine's daughter Kathleen is also a major character in the book, but she hardly appears in the movie. She's she's me. Yeah, this this pretty blonde, and she's she's trying to figure out the truth about her father because she believes he's wonderful and and all that. And and uh, there's there's some also corny stuff about a, a USB stick that she has to stick into the into the doomsday device to keep it from from uh, working, which was not in the book. <laughs> and the actors, we had some, we had what, I know what you, you liked about is the fact that the actors were all unknowns. I had no idea who they were. Yeah, except for Hugo Weaving. Except for Hugh, yes. He was the, uh, he was Valentine. He was Thaddeus Valentine. All the rest are, are really um, unknowns. Robert Sheehan was Tom. Hera Hilmar, she's from Iceland. And she was Very the, the um, she was the Hester. And uh, Ji Hae Kim, I had to look. Uh, she was Anna Fang. I had to look, look her up, and she's actually like a Korean pop star. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. all very talented. Yeah, very very talented. They um, they really brought these characters to life in, yeah. in, in an amazing way. So Good so job. we had really high hopes that this was going to be very popular because, as I've been saying for a few years now, steampunk needs a Harry Potter, and it needs something to actually make. Uh, it popular again because in, in the 2010s there were a lot of people writing it but it never quite took off and so we really encourage people to see it unfortunately and this is the really sad thing the box office is, was not good was not good for this movie um, they spent and they spent a lot of money in promotion I don't know where they spent they it because I it hardly hand. saw any yeah. any ads at all when um, when I've seen trailers. We went, yes. Mm -hmm, when we went to see it, there was maybe a dozen people in the theater, which That's is a shame that. because yes. it was it was a yeah. very good movie. Yeah. Go see it. Yeah. Yeah. We loved it. Um, now, Rotten Tomatoes, the critics. I don't believe those critics. They're they're usually wrong. The critics gave it twenty eight percent. Yeah. But the the audience was a, was about sixty. So. So at least the audience appreciated that it was, that it was a, great, a great movie. So we have to support this movie so that Steampunk continues to be uh, released in the, into the movie world. Because otherwise, you know how Hollywood is, are, is it say, well, the Steampunk is not, doesn't sell. So we're not going to do it ever, ever again. <laughs> so you know how they are. So um, and as far as a rating, uh, I, I really, really like the book. I give that four and a half gears because uh, it was so original and because... Of the characters and the action and all that stuff, there was a couple really unbelievable plot twists that I that really kind of irritated me. People like lucked out. <laughs> There's a lie yes. in a couple places. Yes. As far as the movie, I would say four gears because I think they made some unfortunate choices with a little bit of the, a couple of the yes. changes. But nonetheless, it was really good, and we do recommend it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so go and see it. Yes. So, uh, as, as always, please give us uh, your comments down below. Let us know what you thought of the movie. Hopefully you saw it. At least some of you saw it. Please go see it if you didn't. And uh, please like and subscribe. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And do, have you seen a movie that you'd like us to review? Comment below. Yes. So, for now, this is Vaughn Troy, the steampunk Desperado. And Arliss Holloway, Mrs. Desperado. Saying adios from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. extraordinary.